Oh, YouTube, we're just going live now. This is a special live uh, that we're doing. Um, and we're doing this. I'm just going to straighten this up. We're doing this live from my house because I think it's really important that we talk about um, how to buy businesses and how to do them for free. I'm also live on a webinar. Um, so we're just waiting for that to come live and then we'll get into it. everyone and good evening and welcome to this special James Sinclair webinar that's all around the subject of buying businesses for free. So hopefully if you just excuse me because I've got some notes um, on my other screen up here. I'm also live on YouTube. So hello to everyone watching on YouTube. Um, if you could just give us some comments and let us know that you can all hear me loud and clear. So if you're watching on YouTube, please could you just put in the comments that you can hear me. And if you're watching me on the webinar, if you could just let me know that you can hear me and you can hear me in good quality. Um, so I'm just um, hoping everyone's done their clap for the NHS. I rushed outside, done a little clap for the NHS and then ran in here. So big thanks to our NHS before we go any further. Um, so today's subject um, that we're going to be discussing, we're going to be discussing this on YouTube and we're going to discuss this on my webinar. I'm just going to see if I can slightly straighten that for use to guys on on YouTube. Okay, I think we're all good here. Um, <coughs> Paul Cattles just said, I just told my wife I've got to read that comment. That is a funny comment. Now, how do I get that comment? Uh, oh, where is it? Where is it? Just told my wife I couldn't watch TV with her because I had to what had a webinar to listen to. She said, "Who's it? Who's it doing it?" And she said, and I said, "Lord Sinclair." Where did that come from? Maybe a sign of things to come. Oh, there. <laughs> Ah, I'm not a lord yet. Hello to Sean Foster. Hello to Pete Bowers. Hello to Mark Hammond, Jody Rhodes, Sean Foster, Dave Wood, Jason Thickpenny, Bernard's watching on YouTube. Hello to you. Neil Spearing, John Lockyer, Chris Simpkin, uh, Jay Sands. Good evening. Welcome to the world where every day is exactly the same as the last. I don't know if you can hear this uh, on the webinar, but that deserves a laugh in my opinion. I don't know. Did you hear the laugh jingle? I hope you did hear it. Um, clap for the NHS. I'm ready to get cracking. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, Fred Allen saying, Matt Goddard. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Tendai, hello. Angus Brown, hello and welcome. I've got my water. Um, I think we're going to be in this for about half an hour, guys. There's quite a lot to get through, um, and I want to give you some real practical examples of how I've actually done this stuff in my businesses um, over the years. Um, so it's the, the subject that we're going to be discussing tonight is how do we acquire businesses? And I thought it was really important that I make this because let's be absolutely clear. I think there's going to be loads of business owners that are going to lose what I call the three E's. And the three E's are energy, enthusiasm, and effort for the things that they do. Let me just see if I can get you guys. There we go. Yeah, so they're going to lose their energy, enthusiasm, and effort for the things they do. So I thought it was really important that we talk about this because, look, guys, I, I made a you know I made a video about Richard Branson uh, today. Uh, it's coming out on my YouTube channel tomorrow. I made a podcast about Richard Branson um, and the witch hunt that's going for the Virgin Group and all of its employees at the moment. And it annoys me because I think if we want any form of economic recovery that we're going to go through is we're going to need entrepreneurs more than ever. And as dire as things seem right now, things will get better. There will be some normality come back to the world. Um, and there's going to be a ton of opportunities for those people that have those energy, effort and enthusiasm for the things they do. And there's going to be opportunities to buy businesses. Buying businesses for little or no money is one of the easiest things to do. Um, if you compare it to real estate, people try and buy property all the time with little or no money. And I'm never so sure that that's as legal and as um, as everyone tries to make out. But buying businesses with no money 
happens all the time. And banks are very keen to support you on it. So I've done this 10 times now. So I haven't done it just one or two times. I've done it 10 times. And I'm going to walk you through now. I'm going to paint some pictures of just how I've done this so that in turn, you can go and do it in your business. Um, I'm just seeing here, apologies for the poor video quality. Have we got poor video quality? I'm sorry about that. Um, if we have, uh, that's, that's annoying, isn't it? Um, sorry. Um, Julian, if you're watching on YouTube, can you let me know how the video quality is, please? Um, I'd love to know. Um, everyone's saying it's a bit poor on the webinar, and I'm very sorry about that because on YouTube, I'm thinking it's looking good. Um, Sorry about that. OK, so 10 times I've done this and I want to talk you through how I've done this. Now, in essence, yep, Lawyer 104 says we're loud, live and clear on YouTube. So I don't know what's happening now. So here's the number one rule about buying businesses. You use your cash. What do you use your cash for? You use your cash to improve the business and to market the business, not to buy the business. So you use your cash to improve the business, but not to buy it. That is very, very important. That is rule number one when it comes to buying businesses. When it comes to buying businesses, you want to buy businesses for zero where possible. And you're thinking, James, what la-la land stuff are you talking about? I've done this many, many times. And it's the cash that you put down to acquire the thing. So we understand, let's just quickly, let's just quickly understand this. Someone's just put, Robert Smith's just put, the quality on the webinar is not good, but on YouTube, it's fantastic. So if you're watching this um, on the webinar and the quality is not good, hop on over to YouTube, type in James Sinclair, um, and you'll be able to watch it in better quality. Um, so there we go. Okay, understanding many people lose their business, they lose the three to their business, energy, enthusiasm, and effort. So we want to make sure that that's there. Here's the here's the thing, and we're going to buy businesses with as little of our own money as possible. And you want to uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, there's a couple of ground rules here. We also want to buy companies that fold in to your existing empire. This is also very, very important. So if we talk about a company like Disney, and this circle in the middle represents the Disney central bank account, stage number one of the Disney company is content. Stage number two is merchandise, toys, theme parks, um, cruise lines, buying Star Wars. And all of these companies feed into the middle. Disney Plus is over here, yeah? When people watch Disney Plus or watch their content, they then go and buy their toys. I'm just going to put toys over there. So these two companies cross-correlate. But when people buy their toys, they also want to go on their Disney cruise. So these two companies cross-correlate, and they push into there. When we buy Star Wars and Marvel, we can put those assets into our theme park. The whole thing works like an ecosystem that folds in to existing empire. This is this is crucial, guys, to make sure that you're not just going and buy. But literally, guys, to go and buy companies is so easy. There's so many businesses for sale, so many entrepreneurs and business owners that hate their business, and they're looking to get out. And I have discovered this time and time again. The actual talent in this game that we're trying to play here is learning what we say yes to. And when we do say yes, we dive in as fast as possible. But actually, the talent is learning to say no to the stuff that absolutely doesn't work. So rule number one, when we're buying companies, we make sure that it folds in to our existing empire. Rule number two is the power of leverage. Great entrepreneurs, brilliant business owners understand that leverage is the superpower. Now, when we come back to our Disney diagram here, let me just restart the, the diagram. When we come back to our Disney diagram, what can they leverage? Sorry, what can they leverage? They can leverage the brand. So they can use the brand and shove it on a cruise line, shove it on toys, shove it on a theme park, shove it on clothes and other 
stuff they sell. They can then therefore build a database and leverage their customers. So when they want to open a theme park in a different country, they have what we call buyer ready people. They have a hungry audience for the thing they do. This is the one that no one ever thinks about though, other than the smart people, is management. Leveraging the management team. They're also very, very smart at leveraging their management team. So if you can leverage your customers, your database, your management. Jody says, I've started a few businesses, but where do you find these things to buy? Well, don't worry, Jody, it's coming up later um, as we trundle on through the webinar. So if you can buy a business and you think, right, I've got customers that I can leverage. So, for example, um, I don't know, maybe you're a, a fish and chip shop and you're thinking, right, OK, I'm a fish and chip shop. Um, if I go and buy uh, a pizza takeaway, I already understand the market of catering and I can tell all the people that have fish and chips on a Friday Maybe they want a pizza on a Saturday. I mean, there's a really simplified view here. But when Disney bought Star Wars and Marvel, they can leverage the management, leverage the customers. Once people are fed up of Mickey Mouse, hey, presto, here's Star Wars and Marvel. And as people get older, they still like that stuff. So you're always looking to leverage customers' database and brand. It's just a quick example there. Now, if you look at my career... If you look at my career, I started as a children's entertainer and I built a big database of customers. Then I bought a bouncy castle business and then all of my customers, because that bouncy castle company had all the assets, had all the equipment, but didn't have enough customers. I had the customers. I exploded the growth of the bouncy castle company. Moving on forward, I then opened a family entertainment center. I had loads of people that were used to us going doing birthday parties in people's houses. They were hiring our bouncy castles, buying our party bags. When we opened our first in or play center, hey presto, we've done a million pounds worth of turnover in our first year. That was because we leveraged our management team, our brand, and our customers. So when you're looking to buy businesses, that should always be not forget the money, forget what we're going to pay, pay for the thing. Can we leverage what we already know, our knowledge IP? The, the problem with, with entrepreneurs, one of their biggest curses is they like the new rather than the successful. So they're thinking, yeah, I'm a mechanic. Oh, that fish and chip shop's for sale. I can get that for cheap. But they've never made fish and chip shops in their life. What they should be doing is finding another mechanics business to buy because that folds into their existing empire. Um, and you see this all the time with entrepreneurs. They build their successful business, their cash flowing business, and then they use the cash flow from that business to then go and use it on stupid decisions that they make. I always know someone that, you know, a very wealthy guy had a very um, good finance business, made lots of money in the finance, insurance finance business. And then went and bought a hotel. And the hotels never really made that much money for him because he hadn't got the management team to run it. He didn't know how to do it. Um, so there we go. I mean, Lawyer 104 says, James, as a strategy, do you buy or hold or do you ever let things go and sell? But, you know, the, the idea of when we're building a business, we should always be building a business to sell, even if we have no intention of selling it. And this is very crucial. We're always building a business to sell, even if we have no intention of selling it. Now, I'm a collector, so I've never sold any of my businesses. I've closed a few um, loss making income streams down over the years where I've learned some stuff. So, um, but I've never sold a business. Now, what, that's not to say one day I won't. Absolutely. But at the moment, I'm building a business that I want to do 15 million of revenue. And we're at 12 million of revenue right now. Um, and I want to build it up to a two and a half million pounds profit. We're making about 1.1, 1.2. And then at that juncture, I've got to where I'm at in my career. And then I'll see, look, do I want to double this again? Or am I going to sell some of it? And that will be my realization. I'm working towards that goal. And that's what I implore you guys to do. Come up with what does your business look like when it's finished, right? You know, I always say, you know, so you, you've got to work to this very simple formula. Um, and if you're an Entrepreneurs Network member, guys, um, an Entrepreneurs University member, we have this formula as sheets. So you have the finish date of the business. You know, when it finishes, what its profit looks like when it's finished, what its revenue looks like to achieve that profit. What does the team look like? What's the culture of the business? 
And what do you do in the business? These are the crucial things. I don't, I, I don't know if this is mirrored here. So what does the business look like when it's finished? What's the profit of the business when it's finished? What's the rev We're reverse engineering here, guys. There's a base of business, right? So when, when what does the business look like when it's finished? What does it look like in the end of it? So the way I do it, sorry, let me just explain this. What does it look like in one year? And what does it look like when it's finished? What's the profit in one year and when it's finished? What's the revenue to achieve that profit? What's the team look like to achieve that revenue? What's the culture of the team to make that all happen? And what are you doing? What are you becoming and what are you doing to have all of that stuff? Because business owners that are successful go through continuous CPD, continual professional development. They're always working on themselves to turn them into the best version versions of themselves. Okay, um, so, so let's let's move on. Um, I want to give you some examples if I can, guys. Let me just um, move on here. So um, I want to give you an example of Marsh Farm, one of my businesses. This is a farm visitor attraction. I bought this business and I got a reverse premium. What's a reverse premium? It's actually where you take cash on to take the business on. Now, some of you might be thinking, are my ears playing tricks on me here? There's loads of businesses that have potential, and I saw Marsh Farm have potential, but the closing cost of the business is so much. So Marsh Farm, for example, 70 employees. If you close that business down, you'd have to make redundant all of those stuff. And because it was a local authority business, they all had huge pension strains. They had about half a million pounds worth of pension strains. So you can find businesses where you say, look, you've got a half a million pound pension strain there you're loss making and it was loss making it was losing between 300 and 500 thousand pounds in any one given year and it fluctuated over the last 10 years of when we bought it i said well look i'll take on that half a million pounds worth of pension strain i will do all the restructuring um and I bought the business and they gave me a £35,000 reverse premium because there was some customer deposits in there. There were some annual pass payments that had been collected. So I actually bought the business for zero. And I also um, didn't buy the freehold. I'd done a long lease and I negotiated a two-year rent-free period. And using my marketing knowledge, my customer database and my management knowledge and our systems and our processes, within a year, we turned that from a loss making business into a business that was making quarter of a million pounds worth of EBITDA. Now, EBITDA is the number that you want to when you're tracking businesses. You don't necessarily look for net profit. You look for EBITDA because it shows the cash flow a business is generating. This is EBITDA, and I'll go through that now. It's earnings before interest, taxation, depreciation, and amortization. Forget the, the A for a sec. It's your earnings before interest and depreciation and the tax that we want to talk about. Because some businesses, especially, I mean, I'm looking at a business right now, two and a half million pounds turnover. The net profit is about £20,000, but the EBITDA is about £800,000 because they're depreciating heavily and the interest on all their loans is huge, but it's showing the business generates cash to pay those things off. So sometimes you're looking, when you're negotiating, you want to negotiate on net profit, but to know the cash flow, or sometimes called the CFADs, the cash available for debt servicing, is really important because because sometimes venture capitalists, they put in huge amounts of interest because it's more tax efficient for them to do that rather than showing a net profit. So you need to look at the cash flow generation as much as the net profit. And that's why EBITDA is really important. Let's have a look at some other examples here. Example number two is Oxford. This was a landlord situation. So landlords, especially right now, what I believe is going to come up, they'll have restaurants, they'll have businesses, leisure businesses, and they'll be holding on to these assets and their tenants are just going to walk away and get the keys back. And the They'll be set up, ready to go as a restaurant. Carluccio's have gone bust. They've got 35 restaurants all around London, all kitted out, ready to go. Someone could then negotiate with a landlord and say, look, you've repossessed all the equipment in here. Give me a six-month, 12-month rent holiday. I'll take it on, but I'll buy the equipment that you've got in there because the landlord would have taken control of those assets, and I'll pay you that stuff over three years. And that's what I did at Oxford. It was a play centre that went bust, with a, and we put a laser arena upstairs, so we created another revenue stream, and I'll talk about why that's so important a little bit later. 
And the landlord had £50,000 worth of assets. So I said to the landlord, I'll pay you those assets over three, four, five years. We did it over five years. And give me a three-month rent-free period and reduce the rent. And they agreed to it because we had a good covenant and we knew what we was doing. And I believe those sorts of deals are going to become so very common, especially in the hospitality sector. Imagine if you have got a gym and, you know, they've... That, you know, they've racked up a big load of HMRC debt. They haven't paid their rent. And they just think, oh, do you know what? Oh, I don't want to run this anymore. They don't know. They can't be bothered to market the thing. So the landlord then takes this gym, this asset with all the equipment, all the air con, all the flooring, all the tiles. And you do with the deal with the landlord. You probably can get all that for free as well. Um, and then you just say, look, we'll pay you the rent from day one. That's a great way of acquiring businesses. I've done this a number of times. And then obviously you don't have all the big fit out costs. Example number three, Lakeside Shopping Centre. We opened in Lakeside Shopping Centre. I was 23 at the time. I saw this site. It had the leisure use. It had all the use classes on it. It had the air conditioning, the kitchen. It just needed an indoor play frame. It was the height of the recession, 2009, very similar to this situation. And I said to Lakeside, I said, look, they're paying £140,000 worth of rent. We can't afford to do that, but we'll take it. We'll open it straight away. But here's what I need. A year's rent free, and then I need £60,000 maximum rent. No merchants association fee. Because in a recession, you can negotiate these deals better than you can in any other time. And then I got a credit card. I raised £30,000 on my credit card um, because I, didn't, I wasn't in the situation I'm in now. Um and I managed to get lease finance on some play equipment and we opened it. And that business now makes about a quarter of a million pounds profit for us as well. Again, we put another revenue stream in there. We opened a day nursery. So I'm always looking to leverage the overhead as well as the customers and database. Um, so there's another example. Example number four um, was our Stevenage site. And this site was with a business owner, basically, it was a leisure business, and there was another competitor that opened brand new. And in the leisure world, like a new bar or a new restaurant opens, um, and you lose a big ton of income. And so we saw this as an opportunity because it was fitted out. It had all the, the flooring. It was recognized. It was a 10-year-old business. So everyone in the location of the area in Stevenage knew where it was. We thought we could open a party man world here. So we spent about £20,000 doing it up. But then we spent £50,000. We acquired the business for nothing. And then we spent £50,000 putting a day nursery in. Now, this is a classic example. The current seller knew that it would continue to lose money if nothing was done. They overspent on their wages, so we removed a lot of the management team and we got the systems and processes in place. We marketed it and put a secondary revenue stream in. There we actually built three revenue streams, a laser arena, a play center, and a day nursery. And again, by putting multiple revenue streams onto the business, marketing the business and being efficient with overhead, another site that generates us about £200,000 a year. Example number five is a pre-pack administration. So this is where a business is going bust and the owners don't want to run it anymore. And you go in and say, well, look, you're, you're in a situation. We're going to put this into administration. You help them put it into administration because they've made that decision. But you pre-agree the deal before it goes into administration. It's called a pre-pack. So you say to the sellers, and in this situation, there was a theme park. So they had assets. They put the assets in a different company. So they only put down the trading company. And I said, well, look, I'll buy the assets off of you over three years, but I'll get the lease and all the trading through the prepack administration, which happens all the time. So then I paid £170,000 for the big water park, the adventure golf, the rides and all the assets. And I paid that over a period of time. And that, that that's what I did there. So. There's a number of examples of, of ways there of how I've bought businesses with very little capital. So the, the overriding rule is you buy the businesses for little of nothing, zero, and then use your cash to improve the business. So with Fort Fun, I had a £100,000 budget there. I used that money to improve the business, not buy the business. So sometimes you do have to buy for businesses, though, that, you know, the owners want some money. You know, I've bought good businesses and we've paid them over a period of time. This is called vendor finance. So the seller 
gets paid over a period of time. Now, even if it's a great business, you always want to do that. So it holds the seller to account. It's called vendor finance. So the seller, in effect, gives you a private mortgage or a private loan, and then you pay them over a period of time. Now, I've personally guaranteed that I'll do that, so I've given them comfort. It's not for everyone. I've sometimes given a deposit, and I've said, look, if I don't pay, you can have the business back. So I always try and give them comfort, so we create what we call a win-win situation. And then the second we buy the businesses, we're already looking to acquire those multiple revenue streams. Let's have a look at the traits and personalities of the types of businesses I like to buy. I'm always looking for obvious uh, problems. I'm looking for, has the business owner lost enthusiasm for the business? That's fantastic um, because I can always put enthusiasm. I'm always looking for my management team to agree with me. So my senior team, that because I want them to have heart and soul in this as much as me. Um, I'm looking for a lack of systems and processes, especially when I'm buying SME businesses. Do I think my systems and processes, because I'm going to fold this business into my existing empire, do I think my systems and processes can immediately improve the business? Tick. I'm looking for a lack of management. If the business has got great management, how do I think I can improve it? So I'm always looking for a lack of management. Um, If there's a problem, I know, right, put a great general manager in and you can explode the business. Hey, guys, I literally, if you if you can find an amazing general manager and you buy a restaurant, if you put a brilliant GM and a brilliant head chef in there, you know, you can increase the turnover 30, 40 percent without doing any money other than putting great team in place. Lack of marketing. This is what I'm always looking for. Has the business done any marketing or has it been seen as a cost rather than an investment? So if I can see a lack of marketing, like with the Marsh Farm scenario, I'm thinking I'm all in. Um, and lack of online. A lack of an online presence. There'll be loads of businesses out there, especially right now, that haven't gone through into uh, coronavirus with a decent web presence. And because they haven't got a decent web presence, they're really, really struggling. And there are still loads of businesses, million pound plus revenue businesses that don't do a decent job of being online. Um, it's, It's really weird. We've just opened an online click and click drive through farm shop. And I want to turn that into a physical shop as well. We've got the building to do it. We've actually gone the other way. So we have gone in heavily just being online and digital and not physical. And I think there's a big, big opportunity for a physical brick and mortar business to be very good online as well. Combine the two together because the physical gives trust and value. You know, so for example, people like buying next online because they know they've got physical stores creates trust so if you've already got that existing overhead my god a good friend of mine um, who owns a big chain of fish and chip shops he's just gone on to click and collect because of coronavirus and no one can come into the stores and they're going like gangbusters it's forced them into a situation to make sure they're visible online Um, so look for businesses where there is just a complete lack of marketing and a complete lack of online and lack of enthusiasm, lack of management, lack of systems and processes. Put your energy, enthusiasm and effort into it and good things will start to happen. How do we fund things? Well, there's many ways to skin a cat. There's what everyone thinks is the bank loan. But if you're going to buy a distressed business, and that's usually the businesses that go for low money, then it's going to be harder to get a bank loan unless you've got plenty of assets around you and you've tried, trusted and proven and done it before. So funding, vendor finance. Vendor finance is um, is a great thing to think about. So I did allude to a number of ways that you've done that. So you buy a business, the seller gets paid over a period of time. That's a great thing to do. Um, lease finance. So I've bought businesses and they've got loads of equipment in there. So I refinance the equipment for a number of reasons. I try and I say, look, if this is two ways I've done this. So if you go and buy a business and it's got a, a printing business, let's let's use the printing business as an example. They've got a half a million pound litho graphic digital printer. 
You could say, look, I'll pay for the business. I'll give you half a million pounds cash and I'll pay that over five years. You go on, take the, uh, the printing business over. You refinance that leasing piece of equipment for a quarter of a million quid. You shove the quarter of a million pounds into your cash flow and then pay the vendor over a period of time. That then gives you a quarter of a million pound cash buffer. I've done that about three times. It's a great way of generating cash into your business. Because you, you're going to need some running money. And this is an example of having running money and vendor finance working together. Other times I've refinanced the equipment and given it straight to the vendor um, and then carried on. There's a number of reasons as well. Remember the closing cost of a business. You might be th sitting there thinking, why would anyone just let you pay for their business over a period of time? It's because the closing cost of a business. Don't forget to make a big team redundant, to return a building back to a landlord. Uh, you'd have dilapidation costs. So if you've got a warehouse and you've set it all out for storage, you put mezzanines in, if you're going to give the, the building back to the landlord, the landlord will want it back as an empty shell. So you'd have to remove the mezzanine, remove the air conditioning. That can cost hundreds of thousands of pounds. So actually, it's better to give the business to someone. They take on all the responsibilities. Another way of funding a business. Say you fund, fund a business, buy a business, and you think, right, I need some immediate cash flow quick. I can got some 90 days running money. Channel all your sales through PayPal. Now, there is an expensive fee for PayPal, you know, more than, say, global payments and world pay. After three months, say you've done £30,000 worth of sales through PayPal. If PayPal can see that you've done that for three months consecutively, they will then um, give you a loan. And it's very easy, and it lands in your bank account within like minutes. Um, we borrowed £150,000. So we channeled all of our payments through PayPal. Done this a few years ago, and they're still doing it. I checked before I came on. And you get PayPal funding. So... And it's a set fee. So say they lend you 120 grand, you pay them back 135 grand and they take a percentage of your sales. That's another quick way of getting cash into a business that you acquire. Now, the holy grail is getting profitable management accounts for six months and then crowdfund it. So if you get six months of profitable management accounts or a year's annual accounts, you can go and give that to someone like Funding Circle and they'll turn that into a loan. We've borrowed about a million pounds from Funding Circle over the last 10 years, paid it all back on again um, because of the power of management accounts. Um, after a year of owning a business, if you pay some corporation tax and you get it profitable, then you could go to... Um, um, you could then go to a bank and refinance and get better terms and go again. Um, it's all about getting good management accounts, guys, and paying some tax. Once you've paid some tax, getting funding becomes all so much easier. Um, now, a lot of you have been saying, well, James, how do you find these deals? Um, we're coming to the end of the webinar, but I want to give you some of the ideas on how we find these deals. And um, I'll tell the rest of you how we can do it in the closed group for Entrepreneurs Network members only. So if you're a member of the Entrepreneurs University, I'm running a webinar um, next week just for those guys that are in the Entrepreneurs University on like a deal finding situation. How do we find these deals? How do we find these things? I'm going to give you some ideas onto that now, and I'll let you know how you can become on a member of Entrepreneurs University and how you can try it free for 14 days with a juicy little offer. But how do we find deals? So here's a number of ways that I've done it. Socially tell people and let everyone know that you're looking to buy businesses. So right now, I'm putting it out there. If you've got a business and it's a leisure business, a childcare business, um, and it's in that sector and you want to get out, drop me a message and we'll see if we can find a way of structuring the deal. That's one way of doing it. I tell people on LinkedIn, if I go and speak at events, I go and do it. I'm talking about speaking at events. Whatever sector you're in, go and speak at those events. So if you're in hospitality and uh, takeaway, go and speak at the National Takeaways event and tell them about your business. There'll be 500 people in the audience. One of them will be looking to get out of their business. They'll come to you. Make sure that business brokers know that you're looking to acquire businesses. Make sure administrators trainers. You're on all of their mailing lists. So people like Begbie's trainer who are a big insolvency practitioner, make sure they know that you're looking to buy businesses and make sure you tell them. It's really important that you do that. Networking in your industry. You need to be famous to a few. If there is, you know, like 
in the farm part world, there's the National Farm Attractions Network. I, all of the people that source property and people that own farm parts, they all know who I am. They know I love buying businesses. They come and offer me opportunities when they want to get out. If you can find businesses that you think would be a great fit to you, send letters in the post. So I write letters to businesses and say, hey, um, yeah, we're looking to acquire businesses um, in your sector. This is who we are. Could we meet for a chat and we build a relationship? And then lastly, businesses for sale. Um, so there's loads of like people online that sell businesses. Look for the ones. Look for the ones that um, have been on the market for more than 90 days, because in the first 90 days, everyone thinks they're going to achieve the best possible price for their business. The people that achieve best possible price for their businesses and this is the second part of this is getting your business ready for sale even if you don't want to is those that build a profitable investment so there's three stages of business owners the solopreneur the entrepreneur the investorpreneur the solopreneur is building a profitable job and it is just that they've built a profitable job no one wants to buy a job the next stage is the entrepreneur and they build a profitable business and some people will buy a business and this is what we've been speaking about tonight but they'll be looking to get the best possible deal for it lastly the smart cookies build a profitable investment and when it's an investment it's like property people know that if they invest their cash into it they'll get a return into it think of it like buying facebook or google or disney shares you know if you invest your cash you're pretty sure that over a period of time you're going to get a return from it in effect it's very, very safe. Businesses are usually key man driven. The entrepreneur is making everything happen. Investments have a brilliant management team making everything happen. And that's the big difference why I teach about entrepreneurship plus management equals success. Investorpreneurs, that's entrepreneurs that have that investor mindset, know that they need to build a management team to um um, build a great business. So there we go. Um, now, I want to tell you about my Entrepreneurs University, guys. I've created this during lockdown in coronavirus. Um, it's like having me as your business coach with swipe files, cheat sheets, blueprints, and videos that I release in detail on exactly how to. I literally give you the blueprints on how to go and do different things. Like we've just worked out how to sell on Amazon and get on Amazon Prime. So we're creating a module that comes out in a few weeks on exactly the steps that you need to take to get onto Amazon Prime and the step-by-step -step process of how we've done that. How to do Facebook ads and how to get customers, keep customers, increase the profitability in your business, how to get your teams more profitable. If you're interviewing people, there's all the questions that we ask when we do an interview to get the best possible people to come and work for us. And I want you to try it free for 14 days. So there's going to be um, a link on YouTube and there'll be a link in the webinar on where you need to go. Click the link and you can try it free for 14 days. But it gets better than that, gang, because I've got a bit of a juicy offer. I'm going to, anyone that signs up tonight by midnight, anyone that signs up tonight by midnight is going to get a copy of all of my books Yes, I'm going to post them in the post to you. We're still posting stuff in the post. I'm going to post them in the post to you in my business growth box. And there's going to be some cheat sheets, some 90-day plans, some physical stuff that you can start using in conjunction with your membership to Entrepreneurs University. So if you sign up by midnight tonight, you'll get access to Entrepreneurs University straight away with a free coaching call with James Burt, who's the MD of this business, and he runs it every day. He's watching right now. He'll welcome you in and work out where you are in the business see if we can get you to where you want to get to quicker saw you to success so let me just quickly go back through this you're going to get all my books i'm going to send them in the post to you 14 day free trial even after the 14 day free trial it's only 49.99 a month that's less than a pair of nikes less than a meal out for two which we can't do anymore and i will coach you on exactly how to do all the great things that's helped us build a profitable business we do 12 million in sales we've made 1.2 million profit this year everything that i teach in entrepreneurs university is on the basis of tried tested and proven methods that i use in my business so you want to get 
on Amazon. You want to do Facebook ads. You want to do Google ads. You want to learn how to buy businesses, how to increase average customer value, how to keep customers, how to do customer service, how to interview people, how to find great people to come work for you, how to build a business to sell. It's all there and it's released in modules every single week. But even when you get in, there's keynotes, full keynotes of me teaching stuff um, that you can do straight away. Um, someone just said there's an error when you try to sign up, and I'm very, very sorry about that. Um, if you email james.bert at james um, at jamesinclair.net and we'll put the link of his email address and you can just email him. He's going to put that in the comments right now. Um, then you can literally give it a try for 14 days. And then next week, I'm going to do a Q&A on this subject because I know there's going to be so many of you that want to ask. It'll be a Zoom call. So you're, any new members that sign up and our existing members, you'll be able to come on this Zoom call and I'll be able to Q&A with you on how to find these deals and how to structure some deals. Um, there's going to be so many guys. It's that, you know, building a business organically takes time. So doing some mergers and acquisition in with your organic ideas and growth will be the best way to grow your business. Um, and there's literally going to be wholesale opportunities. And do you know what? You should be proud of it, guys. Absolutely, you should be proud of it. Because if people lose energy, effort, and enthusiasm for their business, less people are going to have jobs. Our economy is going to suffer. And no one's going to be paying any taxes. So we need entrepreneurs to go out there right now to drive business forward. And if any of you are interested in property, let me tell you this. The most tax efficient, smartest way of building a property portfolio is build a property portfolio around a trading business. There's lower stamp duty when you buy commercial property. There's, you can claim all the interest back for inheritance tax. It's so much more tax efficient where there's no tax on trading businesses for inheritance tax. So if you've got a, so if you're McDonald's, think about this. If you're McDonald's and you own the property, you make sure rents never go up so you can always control your asset. As the property value goes up, when you leave your property to your kids, they don't have to pay inheritance tax on it because it's a trading business. If you've got a portfolio of 10 residential houses, they'll have a big, huge inheritance tax bill. The government don't like that, but they love people investing into businesses and commercial property. It's easy to get funding for a profitable business in commercial property. I teach all of that as well in the Entrepreneurs University. So much good stuff. You get access to a WhatsApp group with all of our other members. I'm in the WhatsApp group. James Burt's in the WhatsApp group. And you can just message us questions and everyone helps. We've got a closed Facebook group as well. We've got a brilliant team. If you ever need to have a little chat with any of my team, like people that are actually in business, we can arrange that for you as well. If you've got a 999 moment where you just need some help and you want to talk to someone, we let our members give us a call and say, can you help us through this? And if it's really bad, and they go, well, we, that, that man needs to, to James Sinclair. We do that for our members because we're a community that wants to help people succeed. And that's why we only charge 50 quid a month for it. I mean, I, I charge people one-to-one. -one. I've got clients where I actually, you know, they, they have me as their one-to-one -one coach, and it was £3,000 a month. Now, I've only got two clients now because I'm too busy. I can't do it anymore. So I thought, well, I'm going to do this, 50 quid a month, have me as a coach, watch all my modules, learn how to grow your business. There's no contract. If you don't like it, you can just leave. How can we be fairer than that? And you can try it out, 50 quid a month. But you can try it free for 14 days. And you can get my books and the business growth box if you sign up by midnight tonight. And you get that coaching call with James Burr if you sign up by midnight tonight. So don't be a panicky poos. Give us a try and we'll help you grow your business. We'll soar you to success. All you need to do is click the link below. And welcome to a community of fantastic entrepreneurs. The, uh, listen, I've got the community, the people that we've got in the closed Facebook group and the members we've got are all serious business owners, really good people that want to grow their business. And we'd love you to be part of the party. And I'll see you on the other side to help grow your business. Um, People have already signed up. Welcome, welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. Thanks for joining us on the webinar. Let me just tell you again about that offer. Sign up by midnight tonight. I'm going to send you all my books in the post, Business Growth Box. We sell that for £50 on its own anyway. So all my books, it's going to have my cheat sheets, blueprints, files in there. And then you start getting the modules straight away online on the Entrepreneurs University. It's an online coaching program. So it's me teaching you. Um, and you get different modules every single week. Um, 
and there's a whole that as you go in there's already like loads and loads of modules for you to delve into and use straight away and we've just improved it again we just relaunched it with even more stuff like more bits and bobs to grow your business. So, uh, and it will never stop growing, by the way. That's that's the beauty of it. This is an evergreen thing. So as we learn something like that Amazon thing that we're going to put in there in a few weeks, as we learn how to do it, it goes in the university. As we learn the new marketing techniques, it goes in the university. As we learn ways of growing average customer value, it goes in the entrepreneur's university. My spreadsheets and my all the ways that I do just... Do you need money to get started? Look, look, so David Riva says, is it 50 or 15 pounds? That's 50 pounds per month, 49.99. But you can try it free for 14 days. Give it a little tinkle, 14 days. And someone just said to me, you know, do you need money to get started in the business? Absolutely. I think you could have a load of stuff around the house. Here's what I would do if you're starting out in business. Um, I would... Go around your house and see all the toot you've got and start putting it on Facebook Marketplace and eBay. Generate yourself some money and boom, off you go. Um, and I know loads. I mean, literally, come on. There's How much toot have we all got around our houses that we could turn into cash? One man's trash is another man's treasure, as the saying goes. David Rivers says, how long is the tie-in for? No, mate, there is no contract. There is no contract. If what we do isn't for you, then you just leave. There is no contract. So you can just dip your toe in for a month. We can try it 14 days and you can get into the modules and see everything. And if you don't like it, you can just leave. So there's no contract because we wouldn't do that. Um, that's that's my, my view on that. So I'll see you every week discussing a different subject if you join the Entrepreneurs University. If not, don't forget, guys, as well, um, um, my podcast, the James Sinclair Business Broadcast, we just released a load of content about the witch hunt against Virgin and Richard Branson, and there's a video coming out on YouTube tomorrow evening about that as well. If you're joining us on YouTube, please, please, please subscribe to the channel and give us one of those thumbs up because that does help the YouTube algorithm. Um, those of you that have just joined the Entrepreneurs Network, uh, we'll get them business growth boxes out to you with all my books and um, that, that get you going and you'll get access into the module of the university straight away. And we look forward to the welcome course to help you grow your business. James Burt, our MD, will be straight on there giving you a call and personally welcome you in. He's a fantastic coach as well. And then I'll see you in the modules every single week to grow your business. To continue success, gang. Bye bye.